it's fall, it's time for harvest, and nothing says it's fall harvest like harvesting sweet potatoes. But here in Florida, it can be a little bit challenging because it's not quite the same as all those northerners. So today I'm gonna to show you how you'll know when to harvest your sweet potatoes, some tricks for harvesting your sweet potatoes, plus answering lots and lots of questions from my fellow Floridians all about sweet potatoes. So let's go and get this harvested. I want to grab some of these big ones that I can see. Like that. OMG. Whoa. Look how cute that is. Wow. That is ginormous. <laughs> So first sweet potato of the day, um, it's uh, ginormous. So, and this brings me to the first question is uh, just keep planting with Nemo asked, uh, what varieties of sweet potatoes have we grown? So we have grown three different types of sweet potatoes. OMG. <laughs> Look at this one from Ben. This is crazy. So we've grown two types and this is a perfect example. We grow the orange sweet type and we actually grow a white type of sweet potato because here's the reality is, is that um, they're not just the orange sweet types that you guys eat at Thanksgiving. We actually have a lot of different varieties, kind of like potatoes, which is why I totally recommend don't try growing potatoes in Florida. I get questions a lot about growing potatoes and they're just like lettuce. There's a season for them here in Florida, but you can't really grow them year round. But sweet potatoes you can, and you can get types that are like this white type, which actually are the... Ben, what would you say? I mean, don't these taste a lot like regular, just like uh, Idaho potatoes? Yeah, they're a lot more similar than the traditional orange kind, for sure. Because we've been using this in actual... More dish. mild flavored. Yeah. I feel like it tastes just like a potato, but it almost is like a little bit richer, would you say? Yeah. Yeah, I'd describe it that way. Almost like you've added a little bit of butter. I mean, yeah. we do add butter, but... <laughs> Makes me seem like a better cook. <laughs> So I totally recommend, and the reason I bring this up because we're in November right now and places like Publix have lots of different sweet potatoes right now. So one of the easiest ways to get started is go to Publix. And I'm gonna kick it to you because you're the one who did this. I did not buy these. Yeah, I, I can't remember the first time I bought these. I, I definitely bought organic, which I know that you've yeah, you know, you told everybody to, to make sure to do before. And um, Just I think I bought, I think I bought, um, organic sweet potatoes two different times and one of the times I think the white ones were the only ones they had at which is Publix, why you bought them which is why I bought them <laughs> which was yes. so means it was totally <laughs> unintentional on our part <laughs> yes so that's kind of where we got the two different varieties from and, but did uh, you just get it like a normal Publix at a normal Publix like as opposed to the specialty Publix I don't know sometimes there's like you know like Walmart has like their green Walmart and I don't do the grocery shopping, you no, can tell. No, there's just, there's just Publix. There's ben just Publix. Okay, so you got, so that's <laughs> the thing. So just go get a sweet potato at Publix. Organic. Organic, of course, organic. Um, cause otherwise, cause the non-organic ones, um, it, they put something on it so that they won't sprout. So you can't get slips and stuff. So make sure you get the organic ones. But yeah, so we use these in place of potatoes. So I would just say, so have I grown a lot of varieties? Do we know what names of varieties? Absolutely no idea just go to Publix, grab some stuff, grab a couple, eat one. If you like the way it tastes, then go make more potatoes, mm -hmm. sweet potatoes from the rest. But I mean, we're going off to a pretty good start. So far, so good. Let's get to the, oh, <laughs> I just flung this vine to get it out of my way. <laughs> I flung this vine to get it out of my way and apparently it had a sweet potato. <laughs> so there's a white sweet potato for you, Ben. So EM asks the next question. Hi, I'm growing sweet potatoes, but I don't want to harvest them too early. How do you know when it's time? Thanks. That's a great question, EM, because I think this is one of the most challenging things being a Floridian, because a lot of, um, we, like you are probably like me, we watch a lot of Northern gardeners and they have a very set time, right? They're waiting for it to get to a certain temperature. Then they go put their slips outside. It grows all summer into early fall. And then before their last frost or their first frost comes, they try to get their sweet potatoes out um, because they know that if it gets too cold, it can kind of like kill off their plant and make their sweet potatoes go bad. And that's their cycle. That's it. They don't have any more to think about it. But us, because this is the thing I need you guys to get. This is a subtropical, tropical plant. <laughs> it's a subtropical, tropical plant, which is why it dies off so quickly when it's, um, 
when it's time to get cold up there. But here in Florida, especially if you're in Central and South Florida, so you're in Zone 9, you're in Zone 10, and the little bits that get to Zone 11, we don't have that issue. You will see some leaves um, that are turning yellow as we're harvesting because it got a little bit cold, but the plant's not dying. So when do you do it? So you really just have to remember when you planted it and it takes about four to six months and it'll speed up or slow down depending on whether you're going through the cold season or you're going through your warmer season. So if you remember for all those who hang out and watch lots of my videos, um, I harvested sweet potatoes in June. So we've been about five months, so it's time to harvest again. And because I was going through the summer months, I knew that it was um, time. The next thing is, is you gotta look. So there's the timing like, oh, I knew about November, we should be about ready, which was great because Thanksgiving. Um, but then you start looking. So one of the things you look for is for there to be mounding, which just basically looks like the ground is starting to push up. And then you may actually see some sweet potatoes peeking through. When you start seeing that regularly, you know, you wait a few weeks, it's time. Just go ahead and start pulling. Our next question comes from Joanne Jalan. Can you grow year round? Best way to propagate them for cuttings to grow even more? Do they like sun? Okay, we got lots of questions. So let's start with question number one. Do they grow year round? Yes, for zone nine, 10, and 11. Eight, I think you're gonna get dieback. The plant may survive, um, but I don't know that it will make it all the way through the winter there. That I think it will depend on your winter. But here in the central South Florida, yes. Yes, you can grow them year round. Do they like sun or shade? They like sun. They like full sun here in zone. I'm in 10A, so they are in full sun to semi-shade. They will not like shade, full shade in any of the zones in Florida. So definitely full sun. They can get some shade like from plants as the sun moves throughout the day, but they will take a full on sun beating all day long. No problem. And then um, do you leave yours in the ground for a week after cutting the greens off? No. So this is the thing I see with the northerners is they cut their greens off, they let them sit for a while on the ground, and then they pull them, which I think really has to do with the curing. So no, our way of doing this is we, um, you'll see, we're, we're going to roll it like a carpet. <laughs> so we've got this big expansive area. I think if you were in a raised bed, I wouldn't be rolling it like a carpet, but with as big as this space is, um, we do not come through and cut the leaves off first. No, no, not at all. Um, so I'm just going to keep harvesting and you can see like Ben and I just really just start pulling the, all the vines and some of the sweet potatoes will pop up and then we'll go back through the ground and start digging. Elizabeth McGowan asked, I hope this isn't a silly question. No silly questions, especially for us Floridians because it's always different. So it's not easy to find these things. I have my very first sweet potatoes growing. Yay! And she found out online that they have to cure before eating. What is that? I thought I could just harvest, wash and eat right away. Okay, so these are similar to other rooting crops that once you pull them out of the ground, they need to cure so that they basically consolidate their sugars is the way I've best heard it described. Um, but it doesn't take very long and it takes very little effort, especially again in Florida, because um, you don't have to do a lot. So when they cure, um, so I think this also goes back to Joanne's question, which was, do you leave them in the ground to cure? I guess you could leave them in the ground. I don't, just because there are pests that are gonna go after them. So um, I don't want the, like, the stress signals to be out there to be like, hey, come eat me. So I just pull them out of the ground. I leave them in my garage to cure because what they really need to be at is like around 85 degrees and high humidity, which, hey, hey, Florida, one time it's great to have high humidity. So I think it, uh, technically online it said 85 degrees, 90 to 95% humidity for anywhere. It, it ranges, and when they say that's like between four, seven days to two weeks. Because we get so many sweet potatoes, we're not even done with the June harvest, so we won't even get to these ones. They'll have already cured. Um, but if you haven't, I would give it a couple weeks. Um, and you can use a place like your garage. Maybe now that it's in winter, it might be a little bit too cool, depending on where you are in the state, but that's all it takes. Emily Acevedo, I think I harvested mine too early and they've been curing for a few weeks. They're still not sweet at all. I think I messed up. So I think the question would be is, is that depending on where you were curing them may depend on whether they didn't get sweet. Also, it also depends on what type of sweet potato you got. Cause if you got the white type, like we were talking about, those don't get sweet. They taste like normal Idaho potatoes. So that's one. So it may be the type, it might be where you're doing it. So 
the question would be is is it a warm enough and humid enough environment for them to cure um and those would be my two main questions and then is it too bright because they do want to be in a darker spot to cure um, because otherwise they're going to put their energy into trying to grow slips again so do, those would be the couple things i would look at to just see if if you need to do something differently Marilyn a asks i live in tempe and i have a volunteer in a 15 gallon cloth pot i love a free plant can i grow it through winter here and does the cooler weather have any effect on when they're ready so and then there's more questions so we'll get back to those so the first question can it grow through winter and tempe absolutely absolutely your leaves may look sad at parts when we get into the coldest days but absolutely it will totally grow i would watch out because you're in a 15 gallon cloth pot um that it might get colder than like if they were in the ground so you may want to put it into a more protected sheltered area when we hit those like coldest days when you actually get like a 30 40 degrees with your 10b maybe you'll hit 40. um you might want to put in a little bit more sheltered space just to like let it keep going um, does it affect on when they are ready? Yes. So this is similar to my talk with like banana. So where it's four to six months, it'll be similar with your sweet potato. So they're just going to slow down it's when it's in the cooler months. So where it was like four and a half, five months for through the summertime, I would be for my next crop, I would be thinking it's going to be closer to six months because we're not going to have as many warm days and they like the warm days. So yes. Um, and then the next question you asked was, does this also mean they have a longer curing time? My first time didn't go well. I think I took them out too early. Thanks for taking all of our questions and I really enjoy your channel. Oh, thanks Marilyn. Um, would it affect your curing time? Not, I, I don't know. I don't know because mine sits so long in the garage. So I'm not sure about if it would affect the curing time. I wouldn't think when the plant's ready, it's I, my, my thought process would be it would be about the same amount of time because it either has the sugars that it can pull in or it doesn't what it would affect is if you're trying to cure it like me in my garage and the temperatures right now are lower versus if i was curing them in the summer months where like are we gonna hit 85 degrees in the garage absolutely we are gonna hit 85 degrees so i would just watch out for where you're curing it if you're harvesting them now um but yeah if you're harvesting these like come spring if you grow them through the winter i would think the curing time's about the same Samalita007 asked, I've heard that leaves are edible. How do you cook them? Well, I don't cook them. I don't cook them at all. I don't use them. I eat them. Ben cooks them. Maybe I can contribute. Yes, you can, Ben. All right. Thank you for joining. All right. Can you help Samalita? Yes. So um, what we primarily use them for is in our smoothies. Yeah. So we've made smoothies pretty much every day for over 10 years now. And really? That long? Uh-huh. Really? Uh-huh. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's a long time. <laughs> so we used to always put spinach in them. And mm -hmm. um, actually, I've been doing that a lot lately just because I haven't had time to really come out here and harvest. Like I said in the greens. other video, busy season. Yeah. But um, yeah, usually that's the main thing I would do is I'd put them in the smoothie instead. Do you use the but, big leaves or the little leaves? So the baby leaves, the small leaves, they're more tender, um, not quite as thick and fibrous as the bigger ones. When you're putting in a smoothie, I'd say it doesn't really matter a whole lot, but... Um, but it did, because you did use the big ones for a little bit. Well, part of it has to do with how much I put in the smoothie, too. So is it like a one-to-one -one ratio of spinach to sweet potato leaves? I'd probably put a little bit less of the sweet potato in than I would spinach. Because when he put like the same amount of sweet potato leaves, those smoothies were thick. Not in a very nice yeah, way. Yeah, it was either. a little bit of a, uh, uh, you know, learning process at first and kind of getting the ratio just right but uh but i would say yeah. like based on the experiencing eating it like you definitely want to put if you're going to use these in place of spinach whether it's baby spinach or full like use less than you would of the spinach because I, mm -hmm. I definitely feel like they're more fibery yeah than the other one for sure so i've also used them in salads before um the biggest tip i would give is don't use just sweet potato greens for the salad yeah. because um, they're not like, you know, spinach or other types of lettuces where there's a crunch to them. They're pretty much just, they ch they're just chewy. Yeah. And that's true. It, it's a little bit much if you're getting just a big bite of sweet potato leaves and whatever else is in the salad, but no other kind of lettuce or anything. You're just kind of really yeah. kind of crunching on it forever. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> so yes, but, they're edible, <laughs> but it, it's nice to throw a little bit in with a salad. If you got like a couple other types of greens or something, it, it goes in nicely. Have you used them in sautés? 
I think I might have a little bit, yeah. Or like a soup. So sometimes if you do, if you're doing like a stir fry, maybe where yeah. you've got where you put in some spinach or some bok choy and let the greens kind of really wilt down. Any any type of uh, cooking situation where you're doing that, I'd say you can probably throw in some sweet potato greens in place and and it'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those are the main the main things I'm I've done with them, but uh, smoothie was the biggest one. Yeah. And they grow fast. So you don't have to mm -hmm. worry about waiting till the end of the season to harvest sweet potato greens. Like because of Florida, like you can harvest them all along the way. They will grow way fast. Once they get established and get going, they will grow fast enough that like you can't keep up with them. You will end up mm -hmm. pruning them back just because they go like really fast. Um, much That's exactly how they do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you'll be doing that way more than you would be eating them because they just, they grow really, really fast. Mm -hmm. Even the cold months, I mean, you can see. Here's new leaves right now. And we're, what, 50 something degrees this morning? So, yeah. they grow really, really, really fast. They can get really big too. Yeah, we had some ones earlier this year. Like this one's about the size of my palm, but we've had, we had some a little bit ago, a few months ago that were basically the size of my hand. Yeah, they were really big. Yeah. Yeah, thanks Ben. You're welcome, Jacqueline. Okay, <laughs> see you next time. <laughs> okay, um, our next question comes from Robin Lipman. When do you start your slips for the following year? I do not start slips at all. I tried the slip process. Ben watched me try to start the slips. I did the put the sweet potato in the water cup thing with the toothpick shenanigans. I did the thing where you just grow them on the counter and then pull the slips off thing. Yeah, that's, uh, that's not worth it. It's not worth it. No. It's so much harder. Yeah. Um, so I don't start slips. We take the sweet, well, the first time we took, we took the area, we put it like six inches of mulch, six to nine inches of mulch. We put like a lot of mulch down and I just put the sweet potato and buried uh, one or two of them and that was it. And then I think we got like 40 pounds the first year and that was it. Um, no other prep to the soil, just a lot of mulch and stuck it in. Just that easy. And then all we've done every season since is once we've harvested sweet potatoes, we roll this all up like a carpet and then we roll it back out and then we throw mulch on top of it and it just grows more sweet potatoes. Again, that's it. It's really just that straightforward. So you could grow slips um, if you were really set, your heart of hearts was set on doing the whole slip thing. Um, what I would do is I would wait to get them started in late winter once we're kind of past the days where it's going to drop into like the 30s, 40s, 50s and just go. Once you know you're going to get like 60s and 70 days pretty regularly from that point on, just put them in the ground where, or in your garden bed, whichever you're going to do. Do we normally wait until they start sprouting out the Oh yeah, the tubers? like I would like, if you got it from the store and you're just starting totally from scratch, I would wait until you see like a little couple things growing so you just know that you got grab one huh? from inside. Um, yeah, yeah, if you okay. want to grab them from the garage. Yeah. But yeah, I would just make sure that you know the sweet potato is viable and it's not like you didn't accidentally grab one of the non-organic types. That's just not going to grow because then you're going to be sitting there for months going like, oh, is it me? Is it the sweet potato? What's happening? So I would just wait to just get like the little slip things are starting to grow and then just put it in the ground. That's it. I mean, legitimately, that's it. <laughs> I feel like people want a really long tutorial on it. It's really that easy. That's what all, that really just reinforces the whole point of when you pick the right type of plant for the right area, it's just such a lack of effort. Most of our effort during the year with this is like, it's just growing onto other plants. So yeah. Oh, and here's some that re-sprouted in the garage. So a uh, standard orange sweet potato, the tubers get kind of purple. Yeah. And then the light one we have, they're obviously white. Yeah. So. And then, uh, yeah. So once you there see you that, you can just put them in the ground or put them in a pot or put them in a, a raised bed and mm -hmm. they'll just go. It's really, I know it feels like we have to work so hard in Florida for certain plants or for most vegetables. This one, it's just like, uh, but yeah, most of my effort is actually keeping it out of the fire bush and the desert rose and <laughs> the other areas. That's my main job in the, the season to keep this from going. It's not anything else really for harvest purposes. So. If you want to start slips, uh, I would say start them in the middle winter time in your house and then that way they're ready for late winter and then you can go. Otherwise, if you just want to grab a sweet potato, um, if you're, you know, maybe hold on to it till we get past the coldest days to put it in the ground right now, but just get yourself one or put, get yourself a little pot right now and do it inside your house where it's a little bit warmer. Val Mac asked, I'd be prepping a raised, oh, I, 
<laughs> I'm prepping a raised bed for uh, sweet potatoes next year and any type of bag soil or amendments I should add. So no, you don't really need to add much. So you could use just basic garden soil. Um, they grow really well in mulch if it, once it starts to break down. You really, it's, it's such a low maintenance plant. You really don't need to do much for it. So I would say you could use just like a standard garden bed soil to fill your raised bed and you should be fine. I would do um, a bunch of mulch because it grows really well in the mulch and it will go a lot faster. So maybe do some garden soil and then put mulch on top and then that should be enough. Okay, so you can see Ben's starting to do the rollback method. So I know a lot of people also use pitchforks a lot when looking for uh, sweet potatoes. We don't because pitchforks tend to damage your sweet potatoes. And once they're damaged, you really, your, your clock is ticking on you using it versus... Um, By the way, oh there's, yes. there's an example. Is that in the shot? Yeah. Yes. That's a giant. They get big. <laughs> um, so we tend to do most of the stuff by hand with looking for them. Now this year we're going to be doing something a little different because we're going to actually not use this as a sweet potato patch anymore. I know. Shocker, right? Ben, tell them why. Yeah, honestly, I just having a lot of trouble keeping up with all the sweet potatoes, so we're gonna change it up a little bit. So that is not to say that we're not gonna have sweet potatoes, but we're gonna actually use this area very differently this year, next year. Um, the idea is to get some raised garden beds to put in here. And then we're gonna take this section that'll be in the front. Um, Cause I think with the raised garden bed, I could still get maybe 10, 20 pounds each, each round, twice a year, which should be lining of sweet potatoes for us but what we'll do instead is um, I'm gonna do a wildflower garden up here in front because there's a lot of space so I'm gonna try to go more dense with the sweet potatoes and one of the raised beds and then do more vegetables and then just more wildflowers more native wildflowers for us So we've got the sweet potatoes harvested. I gotta go inside and see how much we got. And I hope this helped you guys with all your questions on sweet potatoes and how to harvest sweet potatoes and some of the tips and tricks and things to know growing sweet potatoes here in Florida. And if you need help with generally what to grow and when to grow it here in Florida, get your free seasonal gardening calendar at www.wildfloridian.net slash calendar. Um, yeah, and happy Thanksgiving, cause that's coming up soon. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye.